Welcome to Candid Conversation number 507. Today's question, does everything happen for a reason? Does everything happen for a reason? First off, you can look at it technically and you can say, well, yes, it does. For example, if, if I found a $20 bill on the ground, well, did it happen for a reason that I found that $20 bill? Well, yeah, but that's not God making sure that I get this money or God taking the money away from somebody who doesn't deserve it or would spend it unwisely. The reason that I found the $20 is probably because somebody was careless with his money and it accidentally fell out of his pocket. And the reason I found it and someone else didn't find it is because I happened to look down at the ground and see it there. So, I mean, it happened for a reason. But it's not, it's not some spiritual or God-given it's not some supernatural event where God ordained that I should get that $20 and not somebody else. And that's usually what people mean when they say about do things happen for a reason. Uh, Jesus, even in one of his parables, the parable of the Good Samaritan, it mentions the three people that are uh, come by and see the, the man who had been beaten up and it's the third person, the Samaritan, who picks him up and takes him in and, you know, makes him, um, make sure he recovers. And he's called the Good Samaritan. Well, the, in the story, Jesus even says, when it comes to the guy who sees the, when it comes to the Samaritan who sees the guy who's beaten up, he says, and by chance, by chance he happened upon this guy. See, so you can't say that everything, spiritually speaking, everything happens uh, for a reason, that God is supernaturally preordaining that this Samaritan would find this beaten up guy and would take him in. Now, it says that by chance, by chance he came upon the guy. It wasn't by some reason. If you look, if you say that everything happens for a reason in terms of God causing something to happen, then you're taking away the free will of man. That's really the Calvinist point of view. Calvinists say, well, God has predestined these people to go to hell, these other people to go to heaven, and there's really nothing you can do about it. You, you know, God in His sovereignty has either chosen that you're going to heaven or go to hell. Um, there's, it has nothing to do with your free will, and that's incorrect. Revelation 22 says, Whosoever will may come and drink of the water of life freely. 1 Timothy 2.4 says that God's will is for all men to be saved and to come into the knowledge of the truth. Peter says that the Lord is not slack concerning His promises. Some men count slackness but is long-suffering to usward, not willing that any should perish. So again, God's will is for all men to be saved. But yet, um, it's only a minority, a, a small remnant of people who are actually saved. And the reason is because of man's free will. Now, God does work things, all things out together for good to them that love the Lord, to them who are the called according to His purpose. Romans 8.28 says, um, but a lot of that has to do with God working behind the scenes. It's not that God makes things, changes circumstances and makes things happen, although He could do that in some cases. So, I mean, things do happen for a reason in some cases. God has uh, a plan and that He will fulfill that plan. The Antichrist will make a seven-year covenant with the nation of Israel. The Antichrist will have, uh, for the last three and a half years, he will have power over the Gentiles. He will have the image of the beast and have the people bow down to it. He will have the mark of the beast. There will be a false prophet. All of those prophecies that you have there in Scripture, I mean, God does cause them to be fulfilled. 
Jesus Christ was born of a virgin. That's something God caused to happen. He uh, died on a cross for our sins. You have uh, the bloodline where in Genesis 3.15, God said that the seed of the woman would end up bruising Satan's head. And so God made that promise and he in his sovereignty made sure that that took place. He saved Noah. There are all these things that you see in Scripture that God did. So it's not out of the realm of possibility that God would do things today as well. God, in His sovereignty, causes you to have eternal life when you believe the gospel. Hebrews 11.6 says that God is a rewarder of those who diligently seek Him. And so if you diligently seek Him, God will somehow cause it to where you hear and believe the gospel. He will reward you with that. So that's God in His sovereignty doing things. Now, God isn't doing the physical miracles like He did in, in Jesus' day, uh, but He is working in the realm that really counts, the spiritual realm. So there could be things that God does cause to take place. Yeah, it's just like... You can think of it sort of like, you know, a, uh, a father and the mother of a child. The child has free will to do things. The parents put up rules, and when things really get to a point that they make sure, I mean, they're not going to be watching the child every single minute of every hour of every day, but if it comes to the point where... Uh, you know, something real important, they're going to make sure that things happen the way they want it to happen for the benefit of the child. So you wouldn't say that the child has no free will, has no way to determine things, but you would say in the things that matter, uh, the parents force the child, sort of like the parents force the child to live in a certain location, they force the child to go to a certain school, uh, you know, things like that. And you can think of God in that way, not that God forces us to do things, but that He, you know, He causes the sun to rise every morning and set every night. He causes the oceans not to go farther than where they're supposed to go. He causes earthquakes to happen. He causes storms to come. He, he is doing in the big things of life. He is working things in the creation. He's working things spiritually. You know, if He rewards those who diligently seek Him, well, that's not a completely free will approach. God is making sure you hear the gospel or making sure you hear right division for those who are diligently seeking God. So there is the sovereignty of God him doing things in his sovereign will but at the same time you can't say when you, when people say well does everything happen for a reason you can't say that God in his sovereignty causes everything to happen for example some people will say well when it's your time to go it's your time to go they'll say that God has a time where you are going to live let's say 87 years that's God's will for you to live 87 years and so there's no way to get around it well that's not true um, if I want to I can but because if if that were true if it was all based upon God's sovereignty as to how long you live then suicide would be impossible maybe God's plan is for me to live 87 years let's say but I could use my free will to crash this car right now and end my life right now if I wanted to. God isn't going to magically keep me from committing suicide. You know, the people, if you try to walk in front of a, a on a crowded freeway and get killed that way or jump off a bridge, God isn't going to take a big old hand and latch you up so that you can't jump off the bridge. You have the free will to do things. So while God has a plan for you, see if if it's all if everything happens for a reason and it's all sovereignty, 
then really you have no free will. So you can't decide if you're going to be saved or not because everything happens for a reason. So God will cause you to be saved or he'll cause you to go to hell. If, you, uh, if you're already saved, well, if you want to come into the knowledge of the truth, you don't have to worry about reading your Bible because God in his sovereignty will cause you to learn the truth whether you like it or not. So why are you doing all this studying? Paul says in Philippians 3, I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. If everything happens for a reason, why are you pressing toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus? You just let God do what he wants to do. If you get the high calling, fine. If you don't, that's okay because it's God doing it. But you see, he says he presses towards it. There's a lot of encouragement in the Bible. 2 Timothy 2.15, study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed. If it's all God's sovereignty, everything happens for a reason, then why would I be approved of God by studying? God forced me to do it. Why are some people workmen and others don't work in studying God's word? Well, it's sovereignty. So the lazy person who doesn't read God's word that person should also be approved of God. The, the non-workman should be approved of God because God in his sovereignty caused him to be lazy. See, The reason a lot of times that people will say everything happens for a reason or they'll bring God into it is because it's just a way of it. It's an excuse for their lack of diligence toward God. Lack of faith, lack of love. Usually it's just wanting to fulfill the lust of the flesh. Usually that is the case. When you're trying to get somebody to do something and then they'll say, oh well, you know, I don't really have a peace about that. I've prayed or I'll pray about it and if God says I should do it, I'll do it. That's a common thing you'll hear in churchianity. And what they're doing is basically, you know, if you say you want them to go, go to, uh, I don't know, go to this play with you, let's say, go to this play, and then they'll say, and you say, uh, well, will you go with me? Usually, if you're talking about an atheist friend, they'll say, oh, well, I'll think about it. So then they think about it, and they say, no, I decided not to go. Or, or maybe they'll say, well, I would like... Um, no, I don't think I'll go. I've got this other thing I need to do, or I'm tired, or, you know, they'll come up with an excuse. And then what you end up doing is you end up arguing with it because you really want them to go to this play with you. But I don't want to go by myself. So, uh, you know, they try to convince you to go. But what churchianity does a lot of times in that same situation, instead of saying, well, I'm not really interested in that play, or I'm too tired, or... You know, I don't, I don't want to pay the money to go to that because I don't really care about plays. You, know, you may hurt the other person's feelings. So what churchianity will do is they'll say, well, I'll pray about it. And usually that, that's just their way of saying no. Or they'll say, well, you know, I thought about it or I prayed about it and I, I don't really have a peace about going. I feel like God doesn't want me to go to that or... And when you say things like that, it's like they can't argue with you. See, if I say, well, I don't want to go because I'm too tired, then you can say, oh, well, come on. Yeah, I know I'm, t I'm tired too, but, you know, it should be a good play, and this is, this is why. And, you know, you can, well, the person just wants to shut them down, and they don't want to go, but they don't want to, they want to be nice about it, and, but they don't want to get into an, so they don't want to say, I hate plays, and I think, I think it's stupid, that place, so I don't want to go. Well, you offend the person because they really like the place. So what they'll say is, uh, they'll say, well, I'll pray about it. Or they'll say, well, no, I feel like God doesn't, hasn't led me in that direction. And you know, maybe a play is a bad example for that. But the point is, when they bring God into the mix, it does two things. First off, it makes them sound more spiritual. Like they're really in tune with God because they're waiting for God to direct them some way. So it makes them be this spiritual giant, which they really aren't, but that's what it makes them like, look like. That's one thing. And the second thing is, and this is probably the most important, 
is like when you talk to a relative or something and they'll say, well, I don't have you, you, this, this decision. Come on, you know, uh, why don't you, you know, take this job over here. It's a great opportunity. Well, they don't want to, they don't want to change jobs. They're comfortable in where they are and they don't want to talk about it. They don't want to really address the real reason that they, that they're maybe got some fears and anxieties about going to that other job and they don't want people to think that it's a fault with them and so then they don't want that revealed and they also because they're Christians they don't want to lie so they've got the pride in that they don't want to reveal that they're really um, fearful about change and they just want to keep things exactly the same and that's the real reason and they don't want that opportunity for growth that this new job would have and uh, they would rather just keep stay in the same old rut and not um, because they're fearful, fearful of change uh, and they don't like to move around so that's the real reason but um, first but they don't want to admit that because then it makes them look bad and at the same time they know they're Christians so they're not supposed to lie so they say, okay, well, I can't really, I don't want to tell you the real reason. They're thinking in their mind, I really don't want to tell you the real reason because of my pride. And I'm also a Christian, so I'm not supposed to lie. So what I'll do is I'll say, well, I prayed about it, and I really don't have a peace about it. So that's just some abstract reason that they give. So one, on the one hand, on the one hand, it makes them look real spiritual and that oh well you know God overruled me it's like yeah I, yeah I'd love to have that opportunity that other job there but you know God I just didn't have a piece about it so I guess God has something better planned for me that's the idea so it looks like you've appealed to a higher authority it makes you more spiritual or more godly in the other person's eyes and probably the most important reason the second reason is that this way they don't have to confront their fear and they also don't have to lie about it and they don't have to get into an argument with you because what are you going to say about that oh God is wrong or no that's not what God said that's just your own selfishness See, you're probably not going to say that it's like this just ends the argument if I say well I prayed about it and I don't have a piece about it or when they see, when you say oh will you go to play with me well I'll pray about it so instead of saying no or I hate plays they're gonna say, well, I pray about it. And so then, that's just a nice way of letting you down. And then if you do actually come back to them and say, oh, well, you know, I'm about to leave for the play, are you gonna go with me? And then they could say, uh, no, no, I, I don't think God wants me to do that. Uh, God has something else he wants me to do instead. So, so in other words, what they do is they don't have to confront their own insecurities, fear, or whatever the real reason is for not doing something they don't have to confront that and they can look more spiritual to others uh, and they don't have to get into an argument with you so that's the main reason people go along with that stuff so and another bad thing and so it's not that God is causing them to do these things and they know that it's just an excuse that they're using but another thing that's bad about this, you know, does everything happen for a reason? The, the other bad part about that is that it is related to paganism. It's fatalism. It's the idea that there is just this life force in the world. Hinduism, Buddhism, you know, they try to reach nirvana. They try to reach, uh, they think that everything is God. And so they're trying to reach that uh, become one with the God force of the universe and so if they believe that everything is one then when they're more likely to believe also in that religion the Eastern the mysticism type religion is that everything happens for a reason it's like there's this God force out there that is causing things to happen nature or creation is the God over you not that there is a God who made creation but the God is nature the God is the universe and there's just force out here that brought life and brought everything to pass uh, this mystical non human type force out there and so they buy into fatalism that everything happens for a reason and that's really just part of their religion 
for them to think that um, you know there's a greater purpose and that the that there's this force out there in the universe that is just in control of everything and yeah I can make my free will decisions but uh, if I but when things don't work out as I plan well you know there must be a reason for that the God force of the universe is in control and overrode my free will so that it didn't work out the way I wanted it to work and that's more of an Eastern fatalism type of religion or idea and Eastern religion mysticism Hinduism those type of things have crept into Christianity where it's more what people actually believe that go to churches now is more Hinduism than it is biblical and so that God force that Hindus worship, I mean, look at yoga. Christians are doing yoga, and that's a religious practice of Hinduism. And so that God force that Hinduism would talk about, they have now said, oh yeah, well, that's what it is. They believe in this fatalism, but instead of believing it is just, just force, they ascribe it to God. And they'll say, oh, well, God has all things, God is in control. Oh, I don't know the reason why. We'll just understand it better by and by. And that's just a buy-in to fatalism. Like I said, there are things. God will cause the Antichrist to come on the scene. God will make sure he makes a seven-year covenant with Israel. God will make sure that the mark of the beast and all these things, image of the beast, are set up. I mean, God will make sure his plan is executed. But for the most part, you got a lot of free will. God is not going to look at specific individuals and cause you to believe or cause you to not believe. Or he's not going to, when you've got the free will and you decide to do things a certain way, but then it doesn't work out the way you want it to work, God isn't going to, that's not God and his sovereignty messing up your plans because he has a better way. And again, that idea, well, God is in control. I don't understand why it didn't work out. Well, a lot of times, it's, it's again, someone not willing to admit their failure. You know, if someone wants to get into a baseball career and they just work hard and hard and hard their whole life and then they never make it, they don't want to look at it and say, well, you know, I just wasn't talented enough or I had, you know, they don't want to look at the real reason. They'll just say, well, I guess God didn't have that career for me. I don't, you know, you go to college and you... Uh, try to be an engineer but you find out it's too hard for you so then you get into business instead well why did you not be an engineer well it just didn't work out I guess God didn't uh, God didn't want me to do that career well no that's not what it is it's just your mind wasn't built for an engineer it's not that, and you don't want to admit that you just don't have the mind for it. it's not that you're stupid it's just that that's something that you can't do or like with the baseball career you just don't have the talent for it or politics didn't work out just right but yet yeah, people don't want to admit that they don't want to take the fault so then they'll say well yeah it's just God God has all things under control I'm just trusting in God I'm leaning on him so um, this idea of things happen for a reason for the most part it's fatalism we shouldn't be listening to that stuff but just take responsibility for your own actions and yes God does do things spiritually speaking but for the most part, just look at it rationally. And even if God does do something, I don't know if it's God or maybe it's just the way things worked out. So it would be wrong of me to attribute something to God that I don't know what it is. So do things happen for a reason? Yeah, but not. it doesn't mean that there's some force or there's God causing it to happen. You have free will. You can make your own decisions. And a lot of times it's just based on that or like with the Good Samaritan, there are things just happen by chance. It's just luck. That's just how it was. Thanks for watching.